Hey everyone, this is Alan over at Cobblers Plus. Uh, today we're going to be working on a pair of uh, lizard skin boots um, that we're just going to be treating the upper uppers on. It's uh, one of the Montana boots here. You now these uh, snake skins, they seem to be holding up pretty all right, but every now and then you do still want to make sure you treat them even if they do look all right. Um, lizard skin does have a tendency to potentially crack and uh, especially right in those bendable areas like that. That's not quite cracked there, but over time it's going to crack. So we always recommend using boot trees for the, that go for, for the ball to foot and heel area. And then there are other ones that can go inside that help with the shaft if you have a soft shaft. Now these have a harder shaft on them, so we don't necessarily need to put one in there basically when, when it's hard like that. But we're going to start out by cleaning it uh, using one of our lighter cleaners. This is the Angelus uh, Easy Cleaner. It's pretty generic. I mean, uh, Phoebings has one, I believe, uh, Lincoln as well. There's quite a few brands and companies. But we don't want to use anything too strong or too harsh on the lizard skin because, as you can see, it's already starting to darken up a little bit, and we don't want it to darken at all just because of the color in particular. Now, if you have a black or dark brown pair it's a different story you can use something a little stronger but I still wouldn't advise it just because anything with a solvent like alcohol acetone any form of thinner or even turpentine may just potentially dry out this leather too much even in that short period of time um, plus you have to allow the solvents to really evaporate nicely but we're going to use our easy cleaner to clean this up and it's just going to do a lot of the surface area cleaning. Luckily there's no serious damage to this upper that's embedded. And we're going to do the same thing for the upper here even though this isn't lizard skin up here. It's just your regular basic leather. But we're still going to clean it up using the same stuff um, because of all the color variations that it has. And there really isn't much on here either. And it's always just a good idea to clean them up beforehand anyways. Okay, there's that one. I'm going to dry just for a little bit sticking in front of my fan right there. Now lizard skin, it's a very beautiful exotic leather. Yes, it is considered exotic. Some people have asked, is it considered exotic? Anything outside of basically that comes from a cow is technically exotic. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot of other things in between there too that uh, still fall under you know exotic, like shell cordovan, for example. And some people ask, is that an exotic? It technically is because it's uh, it's a little bit less common, I guess you can say. All right, so I've got that area cleaned up. Now, sometimes you may have things like this occur. See that darker spot there? That's actually due to either sweat or potentially some form of staining that may have occurred previously that was wiped off on the surface, but it settled into the leather itself quite a bit. So we're going to go ahead and treat that. That just means we're gonna to have to allow these to dry a little more. Got in our bottle here, uh, vinegar and desalter mix in here. Now vinegar is going to be one of your lightest cleaners, and it helps deactivate, neutralize any salts that may be in the upper. And in this case, there may be some potentially. You can see that darker staining that occurred after just getting a little damp from the cleaning solution. So we're just going to take it and spray it down. All right, so we just let it sit there just for a few minutes. Sorry, I had to cut out the video real quick. I got the family over and boys are fighting back there. But um, we let the first uh, bit that we spray on soak just for a little bit. And then the second time around, we spray it down again. And that's when we wipe everything off. Okay, all right, now that should really help us significantly as well. You can also use the desalter 
if you purchase it or white vinegar desalter is a little bit stronger but white vinegar will at least help some well not some but quite a bit desalter will just kind of kick it in a little bit better because it has certain additives and you could just put it on a rag and just you know wipe it all down and everything but um you know because we're trying to really get in there ourselves here we make sure to spray it down quite a bit maybe you don't have any salt damage but you will have little spots like this occur you know lighter and darker areas you know the darker area of course is after because it's been sprayed down the lighter areas that stayed that's actually the uh natural i guess you can say patina of the lizard skin that's showing through um you know regardless even though these were dyed and everything on the lighter colored boots even some of the regular dark brown ones lizard skin has a lighter colored patina that will show through instead of a darker one as most of you may be used to in you know regular leathers or other forms of exotic leather a darker feature starts to show through on those where on lizard skin it tends to be the other way around as well as a few other forms of exotics and i just can't remember them off the top of my head but in this case that's actually your patina that would show through like that but uh, anyways, we're just gonna allow these to dry in front of our fan for a good while, probably about 30 minutes, just because you know we want to make sure everything is evaporated out of it um, before we start taking our next step. So I'll let that dry, and we'll see you back here in just a little bit. All right, so we're back here again. We'll let these dry for a good while now. Now it's time for us to apply our Saphir Reptin Cream. Now this is specifically formulated for exotic leathers mainly such as reptile shark and quite a few others as well it has a little bit of a uh, wax extract in it as well as land lint to condition the upper and it's a little more delicate so it doesn't have mink oil in there so it won't uh, significantly darken everything on us but um, we're gonna start out with the upper even though this isn't uh, an exotic leather up here it's still good to condition it as well in most cases with the regular leather would be using the Saphir Renovator but because it's got mink oil on there I don't want to risk getting any onto the lizard skin and have too dark of a spot somewhere possibly because of it. Now the uh, wax extract will definitely help quite a bit with preserving this leather giving it a little bit of a shine and waterproofing it and lanolin is one of those key ingredients that really help restore the nutrients and suppleness of uh, just about any leather out there and of course I like to use my dauber brushes just because it gets into the nooks and crannies a little bit better especially on the exotic leathers <clears throat> that are a little more textured like this lizard skin here for example it uh, it has a lot of texturing to it and we really want that uh, cream to get in there nicely because if we just use a rag I mean it'll get into quite a bit of it but there's gonna be a few spots here and there that may be missed okay Now again, you'll have some darkening occur if you have a lighter boot like this, but that's normal because this is water-based, of course, too. Um, so that water is gonna still need to evaporate a little bit, but oh, I forgot my brush, hang on. Forgot to grab my large horsehair brush. But I'm just gonna kind of buff off any access that we may have on there. I'm not actually giving it a full buff over just want to get some of that access off possibly not not too fast not too hard of a pressure go ahead and take care of this other one but that gives you an idea right there it doesn't really seem all that different and of course that's the goal we don't want it to look too different from what it was before so i'm gonna go ahead and finish out this other boot i'm gonna allow this to dry for about 10 minutes roughly and uh, we'll be back here again to give them a buff over afterwards. So we'll see you back in just a minute. All right, so we've allowed these to dry a good little bit now. I'm just gonna take our large horsehair brush again and just kind of buff it over a little bit. This helps bring out a little more of that shine. 
And that's where those waxes come into play, the wax extracts, I'm sorry. I mean, it's not too, too noticeable. I guess you can say that one, you can see a little bit more of a shimmer and this one, not so much. So, all right, let's set this guy aside. And there's one extra step sometimes that you can do, and we'll go ahead and do this, but at this point, you know, you can technically stop, actually, beforehand. Let me go buff up these edges here because they're still pretty beaten up. Apply a good coat of wax onto the edge there. So I'll go ahead and do that off camera before I take the next step. So we'll see you back in just a second. All right, so I've got the edges nicely waxed up and everything. So they're not all beaten up looking and everything. But as far as taking a step up, if you really want to shine a bit more, you can actually take a little bit of the Pate Deluxe uh, wax from Saphir. This is from their Medal Dior. I always prefer to use this on something more higher end or exotic leathers um, over their Beauty de Cure line. It just tends to work a little bit better, it seems like. But um, we're just going to apply a little bit on. You could use a neutral or you could use something that matches the color that you need a little better as well. But we're just going to use the light brown because this has very little pigment in it. And just apply a very thin coat using just our fingers. And we always start out with the toe area first. Now, lizard skin should have a little more of kind of like a three-dimensional, I guess you can say, look to it, in other words. So some of these areas, they should have a little bit of a darker feature to it anyways. And um, applying this wax will definitely help that pop out a little more. Uh, Plus it gives it that shine to or top of that after we buff it, of course. Right now we're just applying the wax and that's all we really need to do at this point. We still have to allow this to dry and let that uh, turpentine in the wax evaporate. It takes about 10 minutes or so for it to evaporate really. So after we have applied our coat, just like that. Okay, and I like to go through just a little bit more on that toe a second time, just, just in case, just like that. And of course it's not shiny or anything too much yet. You know, as you can tell, about the same still. But I'm gonna set it aside to dry for about 10 minutes. I'll actually turn on my fan here again, get a little, get a little more airflow going for it. And I'll just finish out the other one off camera and we'll see you back in just a little bit. All right. So we've allowed these to dry for a, little, for a good little while now. Now we're just gonna come back to our horse hair brush, get that one out of the way, and just buff it up now. Now the turpentine in the wax, it allows us to apply it onto the shoe or boot. And it just sits there afterwards and you allow that to evaporate. But what really brings out the shine is this buffing motion that friction right there really makes it pop a lot more something like that nice little shine there as you can tell that one's a little little dull still but this one's got more of a shine all right so get that one out of the way real quick Now that wax that we have on there also, it's gonna have two rolls. One, of course, it's gonna make a shinier looking and everything, but two, the waxes will actually waterproof this upper a significant amount now compared to using, say, just the Reptin, you know, cream as well, even though it has a wax, wax extract in it. It protects it, but when you apply a wax coat like this on here, it definitely, definitely makes it a lot more water resistant, not waterproof, I'm sorry, but water resistant so that the leather does not get damaged in any form of way. But uh, anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Um, also, if, uh, 
if you're wanting us to work on a pair of shoes for your boots you're more than welcome to come by in person if you have questions you can ask us then or you can drop them off for any kind of work done if you're out of town or out of state from denver um, feel free to ship them in to us you can go to our website cobblersplus.com and under the mail in order section just follow the instructions and we'll be happy to help you for, help you with whatever you may need um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this process and it gave you some good ideas, tips, and tricks and you know, opened up your eyes to treating and taking care of your footwear and leather goods. Um, you know, please subscribe. I'll definitely be making more and more videos with different types of uh, exotic leathers, different uh, techniques, methods, as well as the process of how, it, how we go through and resole these things as well as reheal them and other types of repairs. So... You know, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.